Hello, let's bring you back. Um, just an update on the bikes and stuff. So let's turn you around. Okay, see if I can do this with the camera running this time. Um, okay, got Rita the BMW back. Brought it back yesterday. It has been tuned. Um, the idle speed was very, very low and lumpy. It was idling about 750 revs and it was quite um, quite uneven. Even for a Boxer Twin, it was quite uneven. It now idles at 1100 revs beautifully when it's warm. So that's fine. The valves have been adjusted. They were all too tight. Um, and it's just generally been tuned, throttle bodies Throttle bodies balanced, idle speed, valves, everything, it's all been set up and tuned beautifully. So yes, it's still a Boxer Twin, it's still a BMW, and they still sound like they sound, but um, now, because it's for sale, if anyone comes to see it, it's running as nicely as it can be. So um, anyone who owns these Boxer Twin BMWs or has owned them will, will know how these things sound and feel unlike I did when I bought it. But if anyone like me is, buys, buys it and or comes to see it and they haven't had one before, they would have thought it was just a bag of shit. But now it's um, um, something not quite bag of shit. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> detrimental. No, it's running perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it, it's fine. It's how uh, a combine harvester engine should be. Sorry. A, BMW Boxer Twin engine should be. So that's that. Um, I've been... Oh! Um, I've still been tinkering. The Triumph Sprint ST is still at the shop. It was the regulator rectifier, which is common on those, common on lots of bikes. Uh, we're just waiting for one to come in, and Colin will fit that, and then I can bring her back. Um, meanwhile, I have made up heavy duty. This was an, a brand new tail from one of my many, many, many chargers. A brand new tail, but it was missing the rubber end for some reason. So I, I've, I've made up a heavy duty version of it to fit to the Triumph. I also have received my uh, bar risers. Um, these are made in uh, an engineering place in Suffolk. So hopefully they're a bit better than the average, hen, hen, uh, uh, dare I say, Chinese crap you get on eBay. These are actually made in a place you can visit and go and talk to people. So they seem to be well made. These are stainless. These are billet and anodized. But when the Triumph's here, I might show you. And these ones, yeah, the ones you get on eBay are, you don't get this nice screw on cap so you can get to your adjusters. You just get like a push-in tin thing that goes rusty and looks horrible. These are actually threaded in. They're, they're just like the top of forks. So the preload adjusters are accessible just by undoing this 24 mil nut on the top of that spacer. Um, it just so happens, just so happens that I have a brand new six-sided 24 mil. I can't remember what I got it for. There was a specific job that was for, but I'm so glad I got the six-sided one because that will stop these getting chewed up. Not a lot of torque on these, just enough to do them up. So, honestly can't remember. That was a recent purchase for something and I can't remember, but I am glad I got that. So goes in the in the pile, shiny bits. Um, what else was there? Oh yes, let me just get my multimeter. That's the battery from Christine the Escort, 
which I started up last week, did a cold start. Um, even with the, even with that, it was a bit slow turning over. And the reason being, it had been sat on the car for months, and um, instead of sat on a proper uh, battery minder, and the battery was down to about 12.2 volts, and the bulk charge was really low. So we now it's gone through all its various desulfate and bulk charge stages. So if you bear with me a second. Right, um, my, do my connections are a bit, a bit dodgy, but we're, we're well up on charge on this. Um, it's this little thing cycles it through various stages, does different like just the same as your motorcycle ones it, it does all the different stages cycling through so it has brought this battery back to life that is the old battery from the triumph which i changed because obviously we ran out of charge so i put a new battery on it, it turns out it was the regulator rectifier um this one i will stick on some one at one of these one of these chargers, um, I managed to boost it up to get it to 12 something, 12.2 or whatever. Don't think I can do this one handed. No, this is probably not going to, probably not going to, maybe. Oh, there you go. We've got 12.7 12 point, 12 volts and it's been sat there a week off charge so uh, this may still be a good battery it might not have been fried by the regulator now, I'm gonna go and buy another one of these um, this was a real cheap about 10 quid but it's fine it's great for what I do I tend to find I'm using this a lot in the garage with all the wintery battery stuff going on but I also use it a lot in my van for when I go and rescue people at work whose batteries have died and I've got that in the van and multimeter, I've got my OBD2 um, diagnosis tool. I've got another uh, one of these um, jacks, but a, a, a real slimline low one because I had to go out the other day and rescue one of the girls from the office who had a puncture. And obviously there was no wheel brace in the car and I managed to get the spare space saver on it. So in the van is a whole kit. Uh, I've got tow ropes in there, got all sorts, all, all sort of rescue kit because I seem to be the rescue guy at work. Uh, it's all hidden underneath the floor where the seats used to be in my special hidden compartment that you all know about now, but none of you guys are gonna come round and rob my van obviously so yeah that is about it looking forward to getting the triumph not looking forward to squeezing both of these bikes in here but what i would do is take up the panniers go one under there one under there top box on the shelf and this one i'll park over this side with that charger over there. The Triumph, because I'll be using it more, will go in this position and be tending, chargering on this one. And generally, the garage will be really, really tight. And if I need to do any work, I'll have to pull the bikes out um, until I get this one sold. Uh, I have actually got another job I've just thought of. Oh, down amongst my band stuff this old ancient PA head uh, old Carlsborough I can't remember what it is um, 200 watts something like that uh, really really good head these I've had loads of these Carlsboroughs because uh, they're made in England they're really old, they're really cheap and they seem to be pretty bulletproof this one um, the reverb tank, it's got a spring reverb in it. The reverb tank doesn't work. I don't think it's the tank itself, I think it's the wiring. It was a bit 
a bit broken I went to solder it back in but I'm not sure but I'm just going to take the reverb tank out of it because it weighs half as much as the item it's not working I don't use the reverb on it anyway so that I need to get out and just take that bit of extra extra weight out of it because it weighs a ton so that's another little one of my little jobs to do um, yeah, still looking around for some sort of, let's, let's turn your back round again. All right, Rita's on the centre stand, so she's not going to try and fall over. Uh, yeah, still looking for a commercial, industrial commercial unit. Um, no luck so far. There's the ones, there's one up where I have my band practice, where I hire somebody else's um, band practice room, which is awesome. There's one up there I looked at, but it's twice the size of my band practice room, and it's uh, worked out about 500 pound a month. Um, and the only other place really local is where I used to have my old studio, band rehearsal room and studio um, looking for something more garage you know like with a with a proper roller shutter garage door that I can split in two for my storage and my band stuff and for cars and bikes so no luck yet but no doubt um, I'll find something in the future but not at the prices I've been looking at at the moment and uh, one other thing, I changed the oil in Rita, uh, I think I said this already, I changed the oil, uh, these Boxer Twins run very very happily on 2050 mineral oil or 1550 mineral oil, whichever you prefer, and with my trade card, that gallon of Halfords lard is 16 pound that was with my discount now this is actually duckham's q uh, it's just in the halfords tin it's even green colored like duckham's q but that's what it is um so there you go and some advantages of having a an old bmw is that uh, they don't like synthetic oil well they advise you not to put synthetic oil in them until you've done 16,000 miles because the synthetic oil can get past the seals so I figured if you're supposed to run it for 16,000 miles on synthetic oil when it's at 46,000 miles um, sorry you're not supposed to run it on synthetic I thought well why not just put mineral oil in it anyway and it's happily 2050 is fine 1550 is fine so I changed the oil uh, which has also quietened it down a lot. Um, the oil wasn't old, it's less than a thousand, well, it's probably a thousand miles old, the oil, but it was synthetic. Uh, I think it was 1550 synthetic that uh, Colin put in it when it before I bought it. But anyway, she likes the old uh, stuff you used to put in the in the A series engines, the minis, and well, anything from. From my early younger mechanical days everything used to run 2050 pretty much uh yeah it's just melted lard really so there you go um hopefully there's no oil experts out there who are going to tell me different but she's happy with that so i'm happy with that um yeah see you later when when i very <laughs> eventually do get the triumph back we'll fit the new bits and um let's start tarting her up and I've also got the my Isuzu Envoy van needs its MOT Tuesday but she should be okay she was perfect last year barring some brake pipes which we changed recently did the front McPherson type strut top mounts because they were a bit sloppy Anyway, whatever whatever's wrong with it, I just literally get them to fix it. Um, I'm so lazy nowadays. I don't hardly. I, I'll service stuff and bolt things on, 
but when it comes to cars and bikes a lot of the time I just throw it at, at my preferred mechanics now um, I tend to work a lot of shit that this past week we did a day shift and a night shift all in the same day and then you know sometimes I just say let's just give it to someone else let them do it you tinker in servicing and bits and pieces fine Rita the reason I gave it back to them apart from the fact they didn't charge me anything to do it um, the valve adjustment is really really simple it's in fact like an A-series engine it's like an overhead valve no shims just adjust it really simple on these the throttle body balance um, yeah can do that no problem in fact I can do all of the stuff um, I couldn't be asked they're really good at it didn't charge me any money to do it so why not and the van the van is my daily tool I drop it off for its MOT when I go to work um, Mick will MOT it um, if there's anything wrong that needs sorting he'll just ring me up and say this needs sorting I'll say do it and he'll normally does it the same day and gives me the van back it's my tool it's my workhorse and uh, yeah at this point in time I don't fancy doing these jobs myself I'd rather pay someone else to do it professionally so there you go anyway that was Waffle again see you later I'll be springy see you when the triumph appears and uh, west side I don't even know what that means <laughs> or Rita maybe gets sold who knows peace and love See you later. I'm Mitch Bringy.